right? How inappropriate, extra gang for your bang sounds. I don't think these two words should be used together in the same sentence. Hi, I'm Matt and this is Not Enough Tech. Let's say you are brave enough to invest in a smart light switch, just like this one. I've done that and I went a step further because I'm actually, instead of having just a single gang smart switch, I went for a double gang one, despite having just a single light in a ceiling. Why? I'm here to convince you that N plus one is the correct number of gangs that you should be using in your wall. Why? Let me show you. Let me walk you through the functions and I'll tell you why I probably should have invested in a three gang socket like this instead. So first of all, the spur gang is linked to my lamp. Lamp is linked via a smart socket and I can operate it with a wall switch. It's clever. Because I really like squeezing functionality out of IKEA dimmer switches, I decided to map a couple of very useful functions. First of all, I obviously want to control the main light and the lamp itself, so I have a zero for main light and one for the uh, lamp. Now, because I have an automatic feature, which means as soon as the projector is connected to internet, it will turn the lights off, I wanted to have an override possible for my lamp, which means when I press the one and hold it, it will trigger the override and the projector won't turn off my lights. Lastly, I have a timer. You can set number of minutes and when you hold uh, the zero button on the IKEA um, dimmer, then you'll uh, switch the lights on and set a timer. The timer can be anything from one minute to one hour. It's up to you. Oh, it will work with both lights as well. I looked up online what is designated three boards and I found the pinout. So the pinout is as follows. There is a VCC and ground and then RX and TX pins in here and also GPIO 00 for flash. With that knowledge I started to solder things out. Be very careful and try not to solder the pins connect and connect them accidentally to a metal shroud, otherwise you're gonna cause a short. In a corner you see a guide to Tasmotizer, but it's as simple as connecting it to a computer and pressing flash. This is the Node-RED section, so let's uh, start with overview. In here you'll see uh, how the extra gang works with my smart socket. In here I'm using an IKEA dimmer to uh, control it. Uh, I have a timer, which uh, you can set using the IKEA uh, controller. And I have a projector, which is connected to internet, and I can trigger automatic lights off. And lastly, I have smart assistant set up with Alexa Home and with um, Nora node to control Google devices. So let's start to look at this in details. We're going to start with actually hooking up the spare gang. So in here, I've got power one. That's my extra spare gang, which I translate using the bull uh, set uh, or change node, so I'm translating on and off messages to true and false. Those messages are actually stored, stored in a local variable, or in a flow variable bedroom lamp for this in particular. So I have a bedroom lamp in here and that's always true or false. If your smart socket requires different uh, payloads, you can just modify it. Now that information is then relayed back to my uh, smart socket, which also runs Tasmota and I'm just passing it false or true to change the state of the relay. Now this is the only, um, this, this uh, particle flow is the only part when I'm actually going to be directly influencing my uh, smart socket because other than that I will be controlling the uh, light switch which is flashed with the motor. Now, because I want those updates to apply to both gangs, I also use the second gang and I'm controlling uh, or actually receiving the information from that um, topic 
and changing that to true and false um, boolean and then sending that as my flow variable and in this case it's a bedroom main so uh, these two will basically make sure that my bedroom main and bedroom lamp they always going to be set to correct values I've mentioned I have IKEA DMS setup, so let's take a look at this. The IKEA works uh, using Zigbee 2 MQTT, and I have CC2531 USB stick plugged in into my Raspberry. Now, when you use this setup, uh, then uh, your payload click message is going to be on, off, brightness up and brightness down, depending on what you do. If you click one, meaning on, I'm going to toggle my lamp. And I do that by reading the value of my bedroom lamp, so in here, and then responding to it. So if it's set to false, I'm going to set the message payload to true, update my uh, value, values, the flow variables. Uh, in this case, there's a bedroom lamp and a bedroom lamp override. I'm going to explain the override in a moment and uh, send that message forward and update the wall switch gang number one. Note that I don't update the socket itself because I want to display correct LEDs as well on my wall socket so if I gonna update the wall socket then the wall socket is gonna uh, trigger this flow and update the smart socket accordingly. Now if I press the zero on my um, IKEA switch then I'm going to trigger main toggle and main toggle works in exactly the same it takes the value of the bedroom main uh, and reverses it so if I've got uh, value false then I'm going to return the payload through etc and I'm gonna mention over override in a moment now because I have automatic shut off with the projector I've used the lamp override and what it does it's when I'm holding the button one to trigger uh, the brightness up action uh, it will ignore my projector uh, switch off commons and the way it works it's basically I have a projector ping so I'm pinging my projector every seven seconds and if that ping is has a value which is bigger than zero then it means projector is online and it will switch my lights off so as you can see I'm just gonna assign a, a false payload and I'm gonna toggle my two lights however if that uh, if that ping uh, it's none, not a number, or has a different uh, undefined value, then it's false, my projector isn't online anymore, and I don't want anything to happen. And because uh, there would be a problem with this not triggering properly, I had to introduce another value, which is this one, flow bedroom lamp override. Now, it means if this value is true, then the message is um, from projector ping to the ping action, they flowing without any problems. If this value is false, then the messages are stopped. And to stop these messages for flowing and sorry uh, for flowing and triggering the uh, automatic shut off, I have a lamp override. This lamp override will set the light on, and also will set the bedroom lamp override to false, preventing the messages uh, from ping uh, going forward. So that's why I have a uh, lamp override in here and that's why the override is cancelled when I use either of the buttons. So when I toggle the lamps, lamps or the main lamp or main light in a normal way. Last action on my IKEA, it's the timer and it's trigger when I uh, hold zero for more than uh, one or two seconds required to start the brightness down action. Now, when this is triggered, what I want to take is the current uh, number of seconds or milliseconds to be precise and take the timeout. The timeout is uh, how many minutes, in this case, you can see the timeout is done, how many minutes it will take to turn off the lights automatically. Now, because I'm working with milliseconds, I have to multiply this by 60,000 and then add uh, the second value to create a time in the future which is 10 minutes ahead now once i've got this uh, time in the future then obviously i want to set the timer state to true which means that the timer has been armed and the timer itself to the value which is going to be number of seconds uh, in the future and uh, once this is done then i have to have something to monitor this to monitor it i've got a timestamp that's going to be injected into my function node in a function node if my timer has been sent, so my timer state is true, uh, then I'm going to compare if the time now 
is bigger than the timer, then I'm, I have to trigger the uh, lights off and reset the timer. So I'm going to trigger the lights off by submitting payload equals false, then setting timer to zero, timer state to uh, false, and then bedroom lamp override to true just in case because I have a way to reset it. So I should include this here. And I've mentioned that you can configure the timeouts or there is a short node in here, which if you enter the number of minutes, it will basically store that as your timer, uh, timeout. Lastly, I've used smart assistant integrations and I have two integrations in here. Well, I have Alexa and I have the um, Google integrations. For uh, Amazon devices, I've used the Alexa skill. Uh, so just uh, go uh, look for the Alexa skill uh, in the description and of this video or in the article and you'll find exact instructions how to set up. And for uh, Google devices, I have the Nora, which is relatively new and it's a replacement for uh, gibberish. Because both of them are actually responding with true and false, I don't have to do anything, just pass the messages over to my wall switch gang 1 and one switch gang 2 respectively create the device mark them as the lights and you are all set everyone watching my channel probably seen this video of me installing smart curtains and this is main reason why i should consider a tree gang function instead of two so i could control three different light sources main light lamp and curtains. It would be so much easier to have them only in one place and it's so much cooler than actually using the remote or voice commands to control the curtains. So what do you think guys? Is it n plus one uh, the correct number of gangs that you should be using in your wall switch or you should be more traditional and just to get a single one for a single light? If I've convinced you let me know what would you use it for in the comments to this video. There is a link in the description of this video containing project files and detailed instructions, so go ahead and visit that link. As usual guys, I do not have a posting schedule, so if you're interested in my videos, obviously use the YouTube notification system for that. But if you are interested in articles as well, because not all of them come with a video, then follow me on social media and you will get instant update whenever I publish something new. Thanks so much for watching guys and I'm going to see you in the next video. Take care. Bye. It's the bottom 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 bottom. <laughs> oh god.